Today we're going to think about the subject of friendship. And so thank you for coming alongside to listen. And I hope that I can be a friend to you in sharing these truths. Just recently I was listening to a podcast where three young women were interviewed having lost their husbands to COVID-19. And let me just read you a little bit of the script of one of them. This is Pamela, whose husband was 44 years old, Martin, and he died quite early, uh, way back in March last year. Martin himself was a speech pathologist in a hospital, and that's where they think he caught the virus. He spent 26 days in hospital, and Pamela says they were the most stressful days of my life. On her wedding anniversary, she said, I was talking to him over Skype while the lovely nurse was holding his hand. And even though he was heavily sedated, I told him to keep fighting and that I loved him. He squeezed the nurse's hand and tried to open his eyes. That was the last conversation I had with him. He was one of the youngest patients in the ICU at that time. Well, Pamela set up this organisation called Young Widows and Widowers of COVID-19 Facebook. And it was really to create a community of friends for people in the same situation. And as I listened to these three young women sharing their stories, I realised just about how powerful friendship was in their life. Because their husbands had really been, in each case, their very best friend. They had loved them through thick and thin. They'd been there. They're, they're like husbands and wives, spouses. You, you may well, if you're married, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Or even you're not, you can see it in others and you know the power of friendship in a marriage. When it's a good marriage. But as I began thinking about this friendship, I began thinking about how many of us don't have friends like that in our lives. Or maybe we are not that type of friends to other people. And that's equally challenging, isn't it? I know that the need for friendship is something absolutely crucial to human flourishing. The Lord is describing himself as, and this relationship with folks like Abraham and so on, as a friend of God. You know, isn't that an amazing terminology? Jesus says that he no longer calls us his, his disciples or servants. He calls us his friends, friends. And isn't it amazing to think of that love that exists between us of friendship? Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend loves at all times. And that's, I suppose you could say, the pinnacle of true friendship. Many other things feed into that. Some things flow out of that. But at the end of the day, it's saying, loves at all times. No matter what your circumstances, no matter how life goes for you, you may be successful, you may be failing, you may be abandoned by everybody else, you may become the pariah of community, but that friend does not walk away from you. And let me assure you, there are few people who are friends like that. But you and I, we want to be those friends, don't we? I think one of the lovely pictures of friendship in the Bible is found in David and Jonathan. Let me read you from 1 Samuel 18. It says, As soon as he had finished speaking to Saul, that's David, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. What a beautiful picture of the relationship between these two young men who have a bond of friendship that lasts throughout all of their lives until Jonathan was killed in battle. That's a wonderful picture of friendship, and it points forward to the perfect picture of friendship that we enter into with the Lord Jesus Christ, who describes himself to us in those words about greater love having, has no, no, there's no greater love than a man who lays down his life for his friends. But we know that the Lord Jesus Christ expressed his friendship to us in laying down his life, not just for those who were his friends, but as it says in Romans, when we were still his enemies, Christ died for us. And that is incredible. And he turned us into friends at the price of his own life. The Bible says, but friendships don't always be like kind of people stroking each other on the head, do they? Proverbs 27, 6 says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, 
profuse are the kisses of an enemy. And the Bible talks about we should be like iron sharpening iron, so that we should encourage the best in each other. True friends don't simply tell you what you want to hear, but they find a way of getting us to listen to what we need to hear. Because they are our friends, we know they care for us. And sometimes they, if they're courageous and loving to us, they will say, you know, can I speak to you about this or this or this? I'm sure that if they're really good friends and they're praying for you, that those times will flow out of their prayers and not merely just, you know, on the whim or on the spur of the moment. But what do we do when friendship goes wrong? Well, the Bible says, as far as it, as far as it lies with you or within, be at peace with all. And that is a goal we ought to strive for. We don't want to be in any state of conflict with other people. But then listen to what Scripture says. Whoever covers an offence seeks love. But he who repeats a matter separates close friends. Proverbs 17.9 So we know that uh, what maybe is built over many years can be destroyed in a sentence. Just one word. Either, yes, the word spoken or the word not spoken can be an undermining to one of the strongest of friendships. And so the true friendships require effort and time and investment. You and I know the only way to have a true friend is to be a true friend. And so the words of Proverbs seventeen fourteen are strongly warning us. The beginning of strife is like letting water out, so stop before the quarrel breaks out. I can't help but thinking of those that phrase of scripture that we we thought about just recently there in Proverbs, thinking about words. You know, Lord, set a watch over my mouth. The word to be spoken and prayed every day as soon as we put our feet on the floor, that we would be guided in our words. So what happens if friendship goes wrong? Well, friendships can be revived. That is true. Scripture teaches, if your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. The way to turn enemies into friends is through kindness, repeated kindness, and open-handed kindness. We see many people in our society and the world around us who would take the opposite view. You don't, they don't wish to build friendship. They wish to continue to build barriers with other people. But if you and I are God's children, then it is really really important that we try to follow this marvellous pattern that he has set for us, that we should seek to make our enemies our friends. And when I talk about an enemy, I just mean somebody who maybe is either passively, doesn't want to have anything to do with you, or is openly in conflict over something, maybe because you are a believer, maybe somebody you work with, maybe somebody you know in your own family, and they're always being negative they're always trying to cut you down. But this open-handed, repeated kindness is so powerful. So powerful. It does have to be open-handed. That means that you're not wanting anything in return. You're, you're, you're totally, absolutely transparent about this. And that is what Jesus has truly done for us. When he absorbed our sin against him, he showed us the greatest love. And surely we ought to be showing such love as that to other people. There are ways to do it. And I would say gifts, not excessive, but modest, gentle, thoughtful, can have such a building effect in friendships. And I would encourage you to think of ways and to pray for ways to build and to rebuild in the lives of others. Now, it may take a long time, but don't give up. And always remember, that in every situation, Jesus is our best friend. Not only is he willing to be your saviour, but he is willing to be the friend closer than a brother. A friendship that is eternal, accepting without making light of your sins, and loving you and I with the deepest of loves. Those lovely words of Joseph Scriven, written out of deep loneliness at the death of two fiancés and his mother, he says, What a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. 
everything to him in prayer. Go and enjoy his friendship today.